This is J7J bringing you the best early and mid game builds with Ramza. I'll show a mix of physical and magical setups that will devastate enemies in story battles in chapters 1 through 3. These will range from minimal to medium grinding and some no life builds that will absolutely break the game. I hope you enjoy and let's get started. There are several things you can do with Ramza as he has both male and female stat growth rates and also a unique squire. I've talked about and made some of these before, but they are Ramza as a black mage or monk in chapter 1. It doesn't require much grinding, and you will do great damage with little adversity. With the monk build, I recommend learning Aura Blast as it gives you good range damage or shockwave. Have items as your secondary with Potion and Phoenix Down learned, or metal with Tailwind since they are the best things. Then Auto Potion for your reaction ability with high potions only as most enemies will be doing more than 30 damage in the last few battles. Monks don't have a lot of equipment options, so purchase the best clothing you can at the shop. In this case, ring mail and battle boots. If you want to spend a little more time grinding, I suggest getting equip heavy armor from the knight and attack boost from the geomancer. If you want to be a black mage, I recommend learning something like thunder and its second tier spell like Thundara. Items is always great, but white magic with some spells like Cure, Protect, and Raise make you a great backup support character, in addition to being a devastating damage dealer. We will be using the same reaction support and movement abilities like in our previous monk build though. As a black mage for our equipment, the elemental rod of your choice, Although I recommend Thunder Rod as Lightning is superior to Ice and Fire as there aren't as many things that will absorb it or reduce its damage. Then finally, Red Hood, Silken Robe, and Battle Boots. Casting Thunder or Thundara can make quick work of enemies, easily one-shotting or even two-shotting them. If you want a stronger physical build, it will require a bit more grinding. It is for Ramza to get Ninja in Chapter 1. Ninjas are great because they have a passive dual wield, solid physical attack, mobility, and speed. A very strong build that can also carry over to other chapters is the equip brawler with the ninja job. Ramza starts off with good bravery, so you will be doing fantastic damage. Ninjas are just lacking on HP though, so don't move too far away from your other characters as you may need to get healed. These starting builds will be more than enough to get you through chapter 1. They work well on Ramza, but it also works great on other generics too. Moving on to the second chapter, there are several things you can do here. Ramza's Squire can now learn Steel, which I highly recommend to increase bravery on all your characters so your reaction abilities will have a much higher chance of occurring. The Ninja Brawler dual wield build will really shine here as having higher bravery will increase your damage with fists, knight swords, and katanas, so get that bravery all the way to 97 for Ramza. Here are your abilities for the ninja build. Throw, metal, auto potion, brawler, and get move plus 2 from the thief. For your equipment, no weapons as your fists will do the talking. Green beret, brigandine, and lastly diamond bracelet in most battles, and Protect Ring when you are facing Kukulain for immunity to sleep and doom. If you rather be a mage, then I recommend switching to a Time Mage, get it to level 3, and then get Summoner. Learn Ramu preferably, as summons can really wipe the floor with multiple enemies without hurting your own allies. In Black Mage, I also recommend learning higher tiers of the Thunder spells, like Thundaga and Thundaja if you can. If you want Ramza to excel even more at magic, get Preach from the Order and slowly get his faith to 97, or if you'd rather have a melee character, use Enlighten to slowly lower his faith to 3 as he will be nearly impervious to enemy magic. Just a small warning though for your other characters, don't have their faith go past 94 as they will leave forever. So for the Black Mage Summoner build, have Summon Magic as your secondary, Auto Potion for your Reaction Ability, then Arcane Strength or Swiftness for your Support Ability, and lastly, Move Plus 2. As for our equipment, 
it's all going to amplify our magic damage and lightning magic. So Thunder Rod, Wizard's Hat, Wizard's Robe, and Mage's Cloak or Diamond Bracelet. This is a deadly magic build that can take out enemies in one or two hits. Even the almighty Gafgarian. This section is all about the insane builds. Now if you really want to be a bit on the Kaizo side and want an insane physical attacker, you could get your party members to level 99 in Argue Woods along with Gafgarian. JP spillover with the right jobs, so Gafgarian can be in the high 90s as a ninja and he will throw night swords at you in Zerchil Falls, which can be caught. This will make you overpowered, especially if you can get both multiple Excaliburs and Chaos Blades. And being a dual wield knight or dark knight with them equipped, you will just run right through nearly everyone for the rest of the game. This process is very cumbersome though, so I don't recommend this in most cases. For your equipment, Chaos Blade, Excalibur, Closed Helmet, Gold Armor, and Battle Boots. You will hit like a truck while being mobile, having regen, and haste, allowing you to be faster than all enemies. You'll also be level 99 too, so the story battles will be really easy. On to the best magic build you can get at this point. It will also take some grinding, but nowhere near as much. It will require higher tier spells like Thundaga and Thundaja, a high faith stat, 70 and above preferably, also CT 3, 4, and 5, so you'll have to grind for Arithmetician. For the setup, Black Mage as your base, with Arithmetics as your secondary action ability, Mana Shield for your reaction ability, Arcane Strength for your support, and Mana Font for your movement ability. Our equipment's going to be similar to the build previously. It's going to be Thunder Rod, Wizard's Hat, Wizard's Robe, and lastly, Rubber Boots to cancel out any lightning damage on us. And I also recommend equipping this on your party members too. For the Kukulane fight though, you might not be able to get the first turn on him or even one hit KO him, so be careful. But you can easily KO all enemies in random battles and other fights with little to no trouble. In all honesty, Chapter 2 has some really difficult fights, but with things like Auto Potion, being a ninja, and looking at all your equipment options at the shop, can make your life a whole lot easier. Don't forget to buy Protect Rings in the final fight, as it will make you immune to sleep and doom against Kukulane, making the fight a lot easier. And I also recommend not saving over your main save file in Lionel Castle. In Chapter 3, we're going to be using similar setups but with different equipment. Dark Knight is an amazing job exclusive to the War of the Lions version. It is very strong in taking down Weegroff, and you can also poach for the Defender Night Sword from Elder Treants. Or if you did the Gafgarian JP Spillover Ninja trick, Excalibur and Chaos Blade will make quick work of all the enemies, and you should be at quite a high level at this point too. For the Dark Knight Dual Wield build, our equipment is Chaos Blade, Excalibur, Crystal Helmet, Power Garb, and Germanus Boots. And for our abilities, Darkness, Metal, Auto Potion, Dual Wield, and Move Plus 3. If you don't have Chaos Blade and Excalibur, then Defender, Bracer, and Platinum Shield as a substitute. Lastly, replace Dual Wield for Attack Boost. You will still be hitting insanely hard with Defender, and all enemies, even the infamous Weegroff, will fall. For the Arithmetician build, for all you magic lovers, it gets even more insane. This is one of the most destructive builds in the entire game that you can start with in Chapter 3. Just make sure not to go killing Rafa, unless she does so herself. For this loadout, we want Wizard's Rod, Celebrant's Miter, Chameleon Robe, and Mage Power Glove. For our abilities, Black Mage will be our base job and Arithmetic as our secondary. Just make sure to have CT 3, 4, and 5, and wholly learn. If you want to deploy other characters in the fight, make sure they have and can equip Chameleon Robe or have a low fate stat, as Ramza will easily KO them. Mana Shield will be our reaction ability of choice since we don't need any MP to cast magic, Arcane Strength, and lastly, Mana Font. With the Mana Shield and Mana Font combo, 
you will be nearly invincible, being able to take hits from the strongest attacks as it will damage your MP instead. Just move at least one tile if you are out of MP, so you can keep taking hits if things go south. Although most of the time, you will just wipe all enemies in a single turn in fights you encounter for the rest of the game. This is regarded as one of the most overpowered builds as you can cast magic for free, instantly, and it can hit all enemies. Now onto the less grindy builds that are still very capable, the Ninja Brawler. Stack PA equipment like Power Garb, Twist Headband, and if you really want, Bracer for overkill, but Germanus Boots is another good choice. And the usual, Auto Potion, Dual Wield, and Move Plus 3. This is a great build for the fight on top of Rio Veins to KO one of the assassins fast. My last build for this video is a defensive self-sustained squire build which doesn't require that much grinding. Some will know this strategy, it is for taking down Ligroff with relative ease as well as his second form. So what you want is the best sword you can get, in most cases Icebrand which we will remove from Luso as well as his platinum shield and crystal helm. Then buy a chameleon robe from the shop for the accessory, whatever you want, but I found sprint shoes or germanus boots to be great. For the abilities, metal with tailwind learned, martial arts with chakra, auto potion, defense boost, and life font or move plus two. Make sure your bravery is 97 and we're good to go. With chameleon robe equipped, Weegraf will never use hollowed bolt. What you want to do is just move around, or depending if you have bad compatibility with him, so Gemini or Sagittarius, or worse compatibility, Pisces, you can just tank all his hits and just keep tailwinding yourself while waiting. I say not to move as you will conserve CT, meaning you will get your turn much faster. If you are Capricorn or Taurus, you may have to move to trigger life font to sustain and heal as you will take more damage. But remember, you will also dish out more damage as well. In short, you will be increasing your speed so you take in multiple turns, allowing you to KO him or bring him down to 20% HP relatively easy. His next phase, he will have 1000-ish HP, so make sure you have enough speed to get enough turns to take him down. You can also use the Mana Shield and Mana Font combo here as well, if you'd rather not have Chameleon Robe on. These are the best builds I recommend using on Ramza if you want to get through the early and mid game. They are all strong builds that vary in grind time, but can make some of the most challenging fights a breeze, and you can do some cool stuff. Thanks so much for checking out the video, much more Final Fantasy Tactics related content coming out in the future. Until next time, have a great one.